Hey guys, uh, I'm going to walk you through a routine that I used to uh, get myself out of my, my prescription arches. Um, I had, for basically since I was a teenager, last 15 years or so, horrible, horrible foot pain in my arches, um, sharp pains when I, when I run for even, and I do jujitsu warm ups on the mat barefoot. I take a couple laps around the room and I could already feel just horrible pain in the bottom of my foot, which would seem to travel up my ankles to my knees to my back. You know the rest. If you're dealing with any sort of foot pain, uh, you, you don't even have to say anymore. Um, I'd also get a lot of like sharp pains around my ankles uh, from having weak ankles. Uh, basically, the because it hurt so much, I uh, worked on it less, and then it got worse. It's just, vicious cycle like a lot of things in the in the body you have to you have to work you have to use them for them to work that's my understanding anyway take it or leave it i'm going to show you this routine though that i did um and i still continue to do uh in order to get out of my arches um in my foot pain um it's still a continuous improvement but i also gain uh more flexibility helps with my my squats um my running, my jumping, overall performance. So even if you're not experiencing foot pain all the time or, or even ever, uh, a work uh, exercise like this, a routine like this, um, can really help you see gains in your performance. At least uh, I have. Uh, I'm gonna start off really pretty simple. All you need is a lacrosse ball and a foam roller. I like to start off with the bottom of my feet and the arches. Sit on the lacrosse ball, Sorry, stand on one. You could sit. When I started doing this, it was just miserable pain. Um, that's another thing you need is a, is a little bit of a pain tolerance and some patience. Uh, horrible pain, so I'd have to sit down and put a little less weight on the ball. Uh, I've worked up to being able to just stand on it with all my weight. Uh, but the idea here is you want to roll that ball, put as much pressure as you can stand, roll it across the grains and the muscles of your feet. Uh, you can go back and forth too, it's not hurting anything, at least as far as I know. Uh, but you really get the most bang for your buck when you roll across. And just go back and forth. You know, when I started doing that, I was doing about two minutes at uh, a time. Um, there's this nice, I'm going to use a real medical expression here, a nice meaty part. This uh, abductor that runs, adductor that runs down your big toe here. There's this muscle here that I have and I just really like to drive in there. Just work that. Knead it like, knead it like a big piece of dough. Anyways, you get the picture. Back and forth, a little front to back, or the other, or the other side as well. Much pressure as you can stand. Like I said, start with the chair if you need to. Once I do that, for uh, like I said, about 30 seconds to two minutes. It's not fun. Um, once I do that, I take my foam roller. This is, this is brutal for a lot of people, including myself. I don't probably do this as much as I should. Um, we're gonna work out the, uh, the whole lower, uh, lower leg, the uh, posterior part, the back part of your leg. Uh, Gastrocnemius, and basically your calf, big calf muscle, your soleus, your heel cords, Achilles tendon, all that is back there. You also have the, uh, the flexors that run down here. Those, very rarely get a lot of love, at least as far as uh, as uh, healing treatment like we're about to do. Um, we're going to get this foam roller and just work into it. I like to start off with my toe up, kind of get a little warm up, go back and forth, really put some pressure on it. Then I'll bring my leg over to add some weight. All right. And then I put my toe down. And that's where you really feel this. Go all the way up to the top, back down, back and forth. Breathe out. When you're feeling the pain, breathe out here. You want to make your exhales roughly about three times as long as your inhales for, for, for pain management, among others, among other benefits. Press down, and when you find a really nasty trigger point, which might be your whole leg, pump, pump your foot up and down. And that's going to engage the muscles that are really going to be able to knead into the uh, areas that you're working. Um, 
All you might be able to stand is going back and forth, but when you can work up to it, you want to go into against the grain. So start at the top and come across, get all your weight on there if you can stand it. And then move down the leg a little bit, about half an inch. You find a spot that's nasty, pump that foot. Don't be, uh, don't be ashamed if you cry. It's, have this all of us. Do that on both legs. All right, now we're gonna hit the anterior part, the, the front part of our shins here, the uh, name of the anterior tibialis. Um, and uh, it's also some, some, some other muscles on the side we're gonna nail. Um, kind of do the opposite here. So we're gonna get on shin on top. I think Kelly Sturrett calls this the bone saw, um, if I'm not mistaken. It's a brilliant name for it. <laughs> That's what it feels like. That's what it looks like. Uh, we're going to get on top of the foam roller here. Put your leg back to really drive it in. Go back and forth on it again, up and down. Really hit this, uh, hit this section here, the, the anterior tibialis. Uh, you can hit the, the front of, the, uh, of your calf muscle, the gastric uh, anemius here too, but you're really going to get the most, most bang on the front. This big meaty part. Um, bikers, especially guys with like toe clips, can develop some huge muscles there. And if you're not taking care of them, this is gonna really, really hurt. But you'll work into it, all right? So we really drive in there, back and forth. I don't know, do that about 10, 15 times. There's really no ideal way. And again, we're gonna pump our foot when we find a nasty spot. And then we're gonna roll back and forth. I like to hit it up by my knee as well, up here close to the knee. Um, you know, a lot of these, uh, doing the same with your quads, and I do that in another video, doing the same uh, downstream, so to speak, in your uh, lower leg, really alleviates a lot of stress in the knee. So you find if you have knee pain, it might, uh, you might see some improvements there as well. And of course, all of this connects downstream to the foot, vice versa which is why we're doing this in the first place. All right, so after you work both legs, front and back, you got your arches done. Um, we're gonna take, uh, I like to do uh, this stretch here. I'm gonna get down, I'll show you from the front first. Get down, kind of like a, like a lazy downward dog, sort of, and put one, one foot in the back. Um, on the kind of clip it to the heel. See what I'm talking about here. Okay, and we're just gonna pump in and out. And really get some flexibility in the ankle and drive down with this foot. Really open it up, extend, come back down. This is a really good warm up to do before uh, before squats. Um, I like to do this to kind of get my ankles warmed up. It's not really a static stretch. Uh, it's more of a dynamic, uh, dynamic warm up. I do that on both legs. I don't know, but again, 10 to 15 is a good number. Um, excuse me a moment. Then you can grab a dumbbell. You can do this with stairs. You can do this with a wall. Uh, Kelly Starrett has a video I saw um, where he has his foot up against the wall and he's balancing and he's just driving his hip forward. The idea is to increase dorsiflex, uh, dorsiflexion in your, in your ankle here. I have very poor dorsiflexion. Um, it is improving, however, and this is an exercise that that's, uh, calls for the improvement. Grab a hold of something if you don't have a wall. Again, I like a, uh, the hex dumbbell shape. Kind of fits my foot pretty well. You can get a bigger one if you need to, or a smaller one. And just drive your heel down and pull yourself in, pull your hip in. You're not, um, you're not leaning forward. That's a decent stretch in the upper part. But to really hit the ankle, really pull yourself in. My uh, podiatrist showed me this. He said if you want to do anything for, uh, to improve your dorsiflexion, that stretch, you know, hold it for 30 seconds to two minutes um, is, a, is a fantastic one. Again, you're gonna see improvements in your jumping, your squat, anything that relies on this 
uh, movement here. All right. So after we do that, we're going to, uh, I'm going to get down, I'm going to kind of open up my, open up my toes a little more. Why am I, shouldn't be doing this, I gotta do the third world squat there, rock squat. All right. Um, so for this, I'm going to lean forward, put my toes on the ground, and then back, hold it for about seven seconds, put the toes down, lean back, come up, knees up a little bit, that's going to open up the front, and about seven seconds there, back down, and you want to kind of just explore the Explore all your toes. Big toes where you're going to feel the most. If you find in sharp pain, well, I, I tend to avoid the sharp pain. That's not a great sign. There might be some discomfort, but I think you'll mainly feel just a good stretch. Um, anyways, do uh, go back and forth about 10 times. Again, about seven seconds each. Um, and then, ah, uh, uh, yes. Now we'll uh, now we'll work on improving our now we'll work on improving the strength and the mobility in the muscles of the ankles themselves. All right, so my wife actually showed me this. She used to be a she used to be a dancer. Uh, she said that we did these for ballet all the time, and I found it's a fantastic workout. Um, you're going to start, we're going to be doing circles, 30 reps, one way, and you really want to do nice and slow and deliver it, get the full range of motion, 30 reps one way, when you stop, when you're done there, what's up dude, stop and reverse, now if you can't get the 30 reps, um, you know, it might be, you might feel some serious burn there, I mean, you're working muscles just like you would in your, in your chest or your back or your quads, um, just ease off. You don't want to necessarily go to a failure or push to the pain until you're crying. Just mark where you were. And let's say you get 15 in on each direction. Um, and just improve upon that. We're just having fun here. All right, now we're going to uh, make an alphabet. So, make an A and a B. I think you know your alphabet. It doesn't really matter if you're going right and backwards or forward. The important thing is, is you're exploring the full range of motion and your ankles. So there's my E. You go through. And when you're done, that's it. So I do this about, I was doing this about three times a week, about every other day. Uh, now I probably uh, go through all kind of select exercises individually. I like to just sit down and do the whole thing at once. Uh, do that about once a week. Um, just, you know, if you're experiencing soreness the first few times you do it, that's perfectly normal. Just uh, take a day or two off. At least that's what I found best for myself. And you will in see, soon see improvements in your performance, uh, pain reduction. And uh, if you're like me, you might get out of your arm supports to save some money. Thank you.